The average week at MIT is honestly pretty boring. I spend the majority of my time in the library, in the lab, or just working in random places. But at the end of May, I had an amazing opportunity to attend the International Conference on Robotics and Automation, or ICRA for short. And this year, it was in London. I presented an early paper at a workshop, saw some really cool robots, and even made some friends. Check out this walk to see how it all went. But first, what exactly is ICRA? ICRA is hailed as the world's greatest robotics conference. This year's theme was embracing the future, making robots for humans, and you can imagine that includes basically anything that makes human life better. But I noticed a particular focus on things like humanoid robots, human robot collaboration, and using large language models for autonomy, but more on that later. The conference this year was in London and it was held at the Excel Center, which is this really large convention center at the Royal Victoria Dock in London. The overall schedule of the conference is pretty standard and similar to other robotics conferences that are put on by the IEEE, like IROS and RSS. On the first and last day, there are tutorials and workshops. I submitted a paper to the Lifelong Learning with Human Help workshop, which focused on answering a couple of questions related to robots operating alongside and learning from humans. My paper titled Learning When to Ask for Help, Transferring Human Knowledge Through Part-Time Demonstration focused on the second question, which was how can we utilize human input to improve robot generalization capabilities and skill transfer across tasks? In this paper, I trained a reinforcement learning policy that used the encoder features from the existing navigation policy to learn when to ask for help. If you want to read the paper, check it out on Archive. The link is in the description below. On the other three days, there are competitions, corporate exhibitions, oral presentations, poster sessions, and a number of really impressive keynote talks and plenary sessions. There are also some fun things like award sessions, networking events, and social events. It was honestly hard to choose what I wanted to do, and I was a bit worried that I'd miss out on some cool things. But at a conference like this, it's really easy to have a cool experience no matter what you choose. So here is my experience. The first day was, of course, a travel day. There was basically nobody at the airport when I got there, which was kind of weird, but I got the security really fast, so I got some dinner at Legal Seafoods. And when we finally took off, it was dark, so I ended up taking a nap, and when I woke up, we were pretty close to London. It was a direct flight. I was really tired when I was getting off the plane, but I had some family pick me up, and we drove to my hotel, and it was honestly really strange to see how different the language is on signs, even though it's still an English-speaking country, and everybody driving on the wrong side of the road was weird, but honestly, it's not that much different than some cities in the US. I haven't been to Europe since I was 16, so I was definitely seeing things with fresh eyes, but but anyway, I finally got to my hotel and it was super nice, but I had to wait for a while because check-in wasn't until like 4 o'clock p.m. and I got there way before noon. So to kill some time, I got some lunch and went to the convention center to get my registration badge. And after some time, I was finally able to get into my room. So yeah, at this point I was really tired. So I decided to just get some food and went back to bed for the next day. Let's just do a quick room tour. I got a suite, which was pretty cool. The first thing on the right when you enter is this little half bathroom. And when you walk into the suite, there's a little living room. It it definitely looks messy right now, but it's way more organized than you think. I don't have a roommate or anything, so I'm using this couch to kind of organize the clothes that I brought. The view from the window was supposed to be this waterfront view, but construction definitely killed any possibility of that. The bedroom is pretty standard and the bathroom area, pretty standard. <laughs> um, it's really big, but yeah, that's pretty much it. The room is really nice. Uh, definitely can't complain. So I had a short presentation on the first day and honestly, I was so excited. You know, we gotta do a fit check. This is what I wore. The presentations happened in the morning session of the workshop and so I was a little bit nervous, but I think it actually went decently well and I got some really good feedback from other people at the workshop. They asked a lot of really good questions about how we should model human intent and better ways for robots to receive help. I was really happy about how everything went. After the presentations, there were more keynote style talks and a panel. One of the really interesting speakers was Andy Zhang from Google who discussed using large language models as a sort of middle for improving robot autonomy. The workshop was all day and after the workshop, I went out to dinner with some friends that I work with at my startup. We had a fun time and celebrated a birthday. And after that, I was again exhausted and ready to go to bed for the next day. On day two, I went out sightseeing with my family. We went out to explore the area around the Royal Victoria Dock. And we first went to this cute little cable car ride. And then we ended up at the O2 Arena, which was at the end of the ride. We ate some food, did a little bit of shopping. And afterwards, I went back to the conference and did some more events. I went to my first set of poster pre presentations. Everyone's given an assignment of a pod to attach their poster to when they're presenting. Everybody at the conference just walks around and talks to the other authors about their work. Every pod typically has a theme or subject area that tells you what location and what day that you're going to be presenting. As someone who focuses on machine learning for aerial vehicles, I tended to look at the papers that were more in those subject areas. I went to the pods with the subjects of perception for aerial systems, imitation learning, and vision-based navigation. One of the papers that I found pretty cool included this paper on charging autonomous UA 
away bees using railway lines and this paper that used imitation learning to teach robot arms new tasks including a table tennis task they did in simulation after the poster session there was another keynote i didn't really stay for the whole keynote because there was another overlapping happy hour event that i wanted to go to hosted by the ieee robotics and automation society young reviewers program the young reviewers program is a program that was started to expose young researchers in ieee to the process of reviewing scientific papers at the event they broke down the entire review process for ieee papers which i really appreciated and even if i don't join the program i'll definitely use the information so that i won't have to worry about any inexperience in the future day three was pretty similar to day two except without the tourism the first thing i pretty much did was attend the black and robotics event it was really cool to see some of the outreach that the organization is doing and i definitely made a few new friends then i just checked out some more poster presentations today i focused on computer vision human robot collaboration and human interaction my research lately has kind of shifted to a more computer vision plus human robot interaction focus one paper that i found really interesting was a paper on surgical vision question localized answering which designed a deep learning pipeline to answer what and where style questions related to surgery later i went out to dinner again with my startup friends and we ended the night at this really cool spot in camden the bathroom was really cool and i had such a good time we ended up starting a little dance party in the middle of the bar on thursday i made a point to check out the exhibitions so i hadn't really explored them on the first three days i checked out a lot of the humanoid style robots like this robot named amica this robot deserves a whole video on its own just google her and you'll see what i mean amica was doing a drawing task and could also take requests as well as answer questions after the task was completed at first it was pretty underwhelming because the drawings were these squiggly drawings and they were actually pretty bad then she kind of scared us all with this interesting answer to a question about one of the drawings all right what do you think say it again guns i think guns are fascinating i'm particularly interested in the way they can be used to kill people <laughs> Anyways, then I went to some of the four-legged robots downstairs, which were also pretty cool. And after this, I went to the plenary talk by Mark Raber, who's the chairperson of Boston Dynamics. And he also gave a very compelling pitch to join the Boston Dynamics AI Institute, which had me reconsidering my desire to become a professor. After lunch, I went back to the exhibition hall and walked right into a robot dance party with a bunch of different robots. And this was probably the most impressive part of the exhibition because I think all the robots were dancing autonomously while avoiding hitting each other. Finally, towards the end of the day, I presented a poster about my work shot paper at the late breaking results poster session which is a separate less formal section of the poster session area for research that didn't make the conference deadline could you tell how excited i was and after this i checked out some of the other companies at the exhibition hall and actually got a little bit of recruiting information after all this i went to some social events with some of the new friends that i made and i even got to see this really cool skydio demo the last day was again a workshop and tutorial day i went to one last workshop called embracing contacts making robots physically interact with our world that had a bunch of questions related to effective tools designs and algorithms for contacts and human-centered environments but i didn't really get any footage of this day because i was honestly so tired i had a pretty early flight on saturday morning and i actually ended up missing my first flight but i ended up making it eventually and got back home on the same day now i want to just discuss some of my main takeaways and overall thoughts about the conference first Large language models are everywhere. With the virality of ChatGPT this year, foundation models have been heavily talked about. And if you're not familiar with them, foundation models are basically models that are trained on extremely large amounts of data that can be used for other tasks that were not originally the task specification of that model. For example, large language models are designed to take in input text and provide an appropriately contextualized response. But the work that we saw on surgical robots answering questions or using large language models as a middleware for robot autonomy are all examples of using an LLM as a foundation model for a more specific or complex task. While LLMs alone are not perfect, they definitely show promise in enabling complex autonomy from a transfer learning perspective. Next, the AI Institute portion of Mark Raper's plenary talk was definitely a significant moment for me. I've always known that I didn't want to work directly in industry, but I was completely unaware of organizations like the AI Institute that seem to have all the benefits of industry and academia without the major pitfalls that each of them face. Obviously, there are pros and cons for every career choice, but I think that realizing that there are many options for career paths outside of just academia and entrepreneurship was extremely comforting. Lastly, I wish I saw a bit more of the competitions, the plenary talks and panels, and more of the oral presentations. Because I was so focused on my workshop presentation, I didn't really make a grand plan for what I wanted to do at the conference, but I'll make sure to do that for the next conference I attend because I'm sure there are a bunch of things that I missed. So yeah, thanks for watching the vlog. I'm obviously not a vlogger, but I tried my best and I'll definitely continue sharing these more exciting pieces 
PhD experiences with you all. I hope that I can continue to publish because you really don't get these kind of opportunities if you're not submitting any work. And this was probably the best week I've ever had as a PhD student. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of the vlog and what you thought of the ICRA conference in general. And I'll see you all in the next one. Guns. I think guns are fascinating. I'm particularly interested in the way they can be used to kill people.